Pamela. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about Larry? Yeah, Larry. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I know. Hey, you're catching us in the mid-sentence here. Uh, yes. We have Larry Hankin coming up in the following episode of uh, uh, episode because he said he'd be back in 15. Yeah, know. he just came in. And, and he, oh, did he? Oh, yeah, I think he oh, walked okay. in there to do something. He might be in the bathroom as we speak. But. Oh, okay. i got to get the set ready for him. So why don't you talk to the guests because i got to pull over three smaller chairs so that we can all three sit here. Of you course. just talk because I already got the stuff ready. One of the great things Hang about on. Larry Hankin yeah. that I – this is the kind of actor I would want to be if I decided to be an actor instead of a writer. Um – you look at him and you think, I know that guy. That guy has been part of my life in so many shows. And so don't quite know where I've seen him, but I know that I have seen him. I know that he's – and then when you go to research him a little bit, you find out this incredible body of work. The guy's an Academy Award nominee. He started off, as I said earlier, in That Girl. Some of his, um, some of his work includes not only directing and producing, but editing and composing his own short films. This guy is just a treasure trove of talent. So we're going to have him on board in just a few minutes. Ted is setting up the set. So, um, by the way, we are looking for representation for our, um, for our talk show. So if anybody out there knows uh, an agency who would be interested in exactly what we do, which is pretty much what we feel like it when we feel like doing it, we will um, be talking from the talking stick a lot of the time. Sometimes we'll be down at Venice Beach. Sometimes we'll be on Abbott Kinney. But we'll pretty much always be in Venice. Of course, when we go on our field trips, that's a whole different ballgame. Ted and I are already talking about a New Orleans field trip, a place that we both love, near and dear to both our hearts. Can I move you to this table? Of course. No, 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 no. Oh. Just your table. Yeah. My, my little okay. coffee table here. All right. Oh, and something on a very personal note, viewers. I have a daughter who's going to be 15 in two days. 15. Team. That means I lose her for good in just a couple of years. Hey. Oh, our guest of honor is, is coming right. right up. Let me uh, wipe this set away. Let me make this work. Sure. She's going to get up there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can't that chair can be on it? No. Just a second. We're going to have smaller chairs so we can all fit in all here. Right. Ready? Yeah, come on in. Just stop or is that still going? It's going. This is live TV. We don't live stream. I want you in the middle there, sir. You're the guest of honor. Guys, welcome Larry Hankin. And we're going to get everything set up so that we are all visible. There we go. Uh, you're the important one. They know. What I'm going to tell you, man. Larry is no stranger to the camera. <laughs> yes, absolutely, thank everybody. Thank you for being here. Larry. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. I got a hello to you from one of your friends. I got to look him up while, oh, while okay. we uh, have you here. You know, God, yeah, twelve o'clock, right on the dot. You are a prof, man. Well, well, I told them two hours. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but yeah, you so, did yeah, right, right on, on time. The, right on the, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, when I saw you here last week, and this is, I was talking to the um, viewers about this a few minutes ago, one of my first thoughts was, I know that guy, because he's been part of my life. I've seen him on a few things, I've seen him on this, I've seen him on that, and don't quite know exactly everything, but I, I know you played Mr. Heckles on Friends, that was my first thing that I thought, and I know, of course, you played fake Kramer. I did not know that you were additionally a director, a writer, a producer, and even a composer at certain points of your life. Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah. I just um, have a lot on my mind. <laughs> I have to uh, get it all. Done. Yeah, but you, you. But a lot of people just think that I'm uh, the husband of a second cousin. That they do. You know, like I'm familiar. I, I know you. Next door to are you a guy? relative? Yeah. I, I, some, you know, they don't know. You know, sometimes in an elevator. Somebody. So um, they don't know that the name. See, that's the that's the divide. But that's so cool, though. I mean, that's the glass seal. But you've always been. But you're always I think always I would there. rather have a successful career. That's always steady. And that I can walk into a coffee shop and I'm not mobbed. That's just well. That's me. because you. But don't, doesn't have the bank account with it. I'm sure. It's not even that. It's there's certain things I want to do, oh. and I can't do them unless I have name. Recognition. Uh, that's like a if I want to raise, if I want to raise ten million dollars, right, without name recognition, right, right. But if my name was Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that would be a little easier. So 
you know, it, it's um, there's, there's pecking order. Well, you know, and that's a serious flaw in, in Hollywood because often the people that are most in uh, are, are, are the least interesting. Like Brad Pitt, I understand. I do. I have two sisters who are crazy about this guy. He does nothing. For me. I, I don't. I he just looks so boring. He does something for somebody's bank account. <laughs> yeah, apparently. To do with. But I'm the audience. Well, no, of course it does, because I'm the audience member. And I'm not going to pay 10 or 15 bucks to see Brad Pitt. There's got to be somebody else or but something there, there else. there are plenty of other people who recognize his name. That's true. That's that's really on the wall. But I'm, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. And I, saw I you love what you're doing. Yes. I was here on your on your film night. The M Tell us about that. Tell us about the film night that was here. Well, we... well. Well, I just made a whole bunch of. I had this character. Uh, see, it's um, the Emmett really complex. Uh, Emmett well, I guess it's it some, uh, the, the the point being that I noticed many, 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 many years ago, back in the day, is what we say. Now, <laughs> back in the day, we used to say a couple of years ago. Uh, I I noticed that a lot of Mainly, it was it was women actresses. When they reached 35, they disappeared, or they started playing mothers on TV. These are movie actresses, and uh, so there was like this end to it all, and your your fame or whatever. And I noticed a little little older for men, but still, there was your hair turns white and things. Other things turn white too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the quote for the day. And, Other uh, things turn white too. Uh, yes. So um, I try to hedge that. So what I did was, I remember that uh, one of my favorite people that I grew up with was Charlie Chaplin. You know, I mean, I just love Charlie Chaplin. I guess that's why I became a, a comic Charlie actor. Chaplin. Oh, really? But, so but I noticed beautiful. that. After a while, he got too old to play that little trend. Yeah. Like if you notice, he got a little, little fat, a little slow, yeah. wasn't as dexterous, and, um, and and you know, then sound came in, and things changed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I thought, you know, um, when he was when he started, when he was around sixteen or seventeen or eighteen, he invented a character, the little tramp, that he grew into. That little tramp character was older than. Charles Chaplin. From what I understand, uh, he wasn't recognized in public for a long time because he looked so different. Because he had a mustache and then the he had those learned. clothes and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, the idea is to get a character that you can grow into and you can't grow out of it because by the time I grow out of it, I'll probably be dead. You know? <laughs> so, I, I, so, Ambit, so I invented an old character that I could stay with and didn't have to worry about playing somebody's father on TV. That's so right. you, you develop into so the role more and more. So I developed a character called Emmett, the outlaw Emmett Demas. He's a wonderful guy. He's this guy. old crazy guy. Like he's, It's Don Quixote on a motorcycle. Basically, <laughs> that's it. It's Rooster Cogburn on a motorcycle. <laughs> and so it's that's brilliant. It's just that's so what I show. Witty. It is just your, your wit. Your writing is amazing. I just kick. I just yeah. kick the studio. Yeah, I kick the studio. <laughs> hey, now how, how progressive is this? Probably your first interview on TV with the studio was a lot bigger than this, right? This is, this is <laughs> how amazing this is, a is this? Piece. Yeah, I'm really Psychology happy with it. This is all accidental. Yeah, you can make a, a, a feature film with. Yeah, yeah, you can do the electronics. He's been on the air for 13 days. He has viewers in Sweden. Yeah, we're cool. Hi. Right. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah, right. I and mean, we're gonna the catch skull. up because I got I got other actors coming on because you've inspired me. Because when you you know, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actors in love. You're yeah, our exactly. first. You are very our oh, very oh, first celebrity. Right. Absolutely. And um, I wanted to tell you because I can I've been over here searching trying to find this message for you, but oh, I right. think you'll figure it out when I tell you. I'm about to ask you to tell us a sometimes Jones story. Oh, that's um, Mark. Elspeth. Yes, Mark. So, Mark, there's your shout out. Thank you for hey, Mark. for texting Hi, me Mark. on that one. And uh, well, so, no, you can't. I mean, sometimes Jones stories are. I write fables. They're amazing. I watched one yeah. last night. I watched uh, yeah, it like they're, they're they're ten minutes long. Right? Yeah, he's just he's he's a runaway. Well, I divided my life into uh, sometimes Jones and um, Emma Davis. Uh, anything that happened. Any any story that I think of, 
that the character is below 35, that's sometimes Jones. Oh, so those are written that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And anything that's kind of over 65 to 80 is Emmett. Is, is Emmett. <laughs> and then there's this kind of no man's land in between 35 and 60 or 50, where I haven't uh, figured out what, what that is. Right. That's, could, that could be either uh, you think I'm sometimes writing a new character? future or Emmett's past. Are you interested in writing another character that could? No, not they really, but there's always. Uh, and do whatever. Um, what? I was just saying, your animated one can do whatever. I mean, if you want with another idea. Yeah, but it hasn't you... occurred to me. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, it comes from. I wouldn't force it. That basically, way. both of those come out of necessity. One, right. one to cover the future and one to cash in on the past. Sometimes Jones is, is brilliant, and I'm going to put up a link at least on my, my Facebook page or my TED TV page. We, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I don't want to miss sometimes Jones. Um, we got a long, set, long segment. We're going to not be able to upload this oh. one immediately, but we're going to take a, a break after I close it. Take a two-minute break. Rock on and peace up. All right.